CBT Nuggets Micro Nuggets, CISSP Incident Handling. It's extremely important for a CISSP candidate to be familiar with things like incident handling, incident response teams, and forensics. And you may not get a chance to do this hands-on, so I'm going to show you how to use my write blocker to examine a hard drive for a forensics case. Okay, here's our scenario. We're working with our legal department and we're working with law enforcement because we have an employee in our organization who is downloading to a corporate system. Uh, they're downloading graphics files that are intellectual property slash illegal copies of pictures or possibly CP, which would be illegal pornographic pictures. Let's just put it that way. So we need to do an investigation on this hard drive. So you can see down here, we've extracted this hard drive from their PC, from their system. And we're going to use a Tableau write blocker. Now this is my eSATA forensic bridge, my Tableau write blocker. The reason why we use a write blocker is so that we do not write to the drive when we're investigating and analyzing the data. We don't want to make any changes to that particular device or leave a fingerprint because if we do it could ruin our investigation and we, it wouldn't hold up in a court of law. Now this particular device will connect to a wide variety of different types of drives. IDE, SATA, laptop drives, even memory cards. So I have my forensics workstation here which is a Windows 7 64-bit Dell machine with 8 gigs of RAM. Very beefy machine. It's dedicated just to this purpose, and I've got my Tableau bridge, and here's the drive we're going to investigate. Now, of course, you would do all kinds of documentation first, but I don't have time to do that because I want to show you this demonstration real quick. As you can see, my forensics toolkit has a bunch of different connectors and adapters that go to different drives, different types of IDE drives, ZIF drives, memory cards, on cell phones, and the like. And of course, I have a wide variety of different connectors that I use to connect to different hardware devices to extract and analyze data. So on my drive, I'll take this power cable, go from my Tableau to the power connector on the hard drive, and then I'll use this cable, make sure that the blue end connects to the Tableau, very important. Blue end goes to the right blocker, black end goes to the hard drive. Then, I take an eSATA cable that connects to this port. This is the best option. You can use FireWire and USB, but eSATA is the best. Connect it in here, and then go to my eSATA drive on my workstation. Now, you can see a USB drive here on my forensics workstation. Uh, you can't see it right now, but I do have a 4 gigabyte drive uh, plugged in there right now, a SanDisk. Now, I would recommend probably something like a terabyte drive of some kind, because you're going to save memory images and disk images and all types of hashed, MD5 hashed images to this drive. But I've got a 4 gig SanDisk plugged in here right now. Now, I don't run Camtasia on my forensics workstation, so I'm going to RDP over there, and I'm going to run Access Data FTK Imager. Now, the first thing you're going to do before you connect the write blocker to the drive is you're going to do a memory dump. You're going to capture memory. So you click on this, choose a path for your memory dump file. Of course, I would use that SAN disk or whatever's on that USB port, and then give it some name. This name should represent this particular case that you're working on. So you're going to capture the memory first. That'll take quite a while. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and run a tool called EDD. Let me go find it. Encrypted Disk Detector. I'm going to run it as an administrator. I need to make sure that there's no TrueCrypt or PGP or BitLocker or SafeBoot on this drive because if so, uh, I'm going to have a tough time getting that data. But as I can see here, I don't have any encrypted drives there. Now I'm ready to go ahead and use my Access Data FTK Imager. Let's go up here to File and then Create Disk Image. We're going to do a physical drive even though with my eSATA cable connected to that device over there I could do logical drive, create an image file. But I'm going to go ahead and say Next. It's this WDC drive down here at the end. Click on Finish. Let's go ahead and Add. Uh, either raw DD format or E01. E01 is good if you're going to use something like guidance software products. I'll do E01. Click on Next. You should fill this in for good documentation, case number, evidence number, description, examiner, and notes. Destination folder, I decided to go away from the 4 gig SAN disk because it wasn't big enough. So I'm going to go ahead and use this larger drive, this passport drive and give the file name. We'll say John Doe case and then finish. We want to verify images which means MD5 hash is going to be done. Create a directory listing, click on start. Now this is going to take a long time. 
I don't have that much time. So I'll catch you on the flip side. We actually have a verification of our drive image. We're looking for matching values here on the MD5 and SHA-1 hash. Once we see that, we can click on close. We can also close this as well. And we want to look at the image summary. Now, I didn't put a lot of metadata in here. You saw that panel earlier. I should have filled this in. In a normal situation, I would. Case information, case number, evidence number, unique description and notes. I would have been very, very granular on that information, that documentation. But you can go in here and see other information about this drive as well. You can see all the files that were created, okay, 52 files on that E drive. Now we can go up to File, and we can add an evidence item. And it's an image file now. Go click on Next, browse to that drive, that passport drive, open up our file, and then we can come down here and take a look at our partition, for example. And what we're really looking for here is like this orphan folder. I'm looking for a bunch of deleted files because this user tried to delete their graphics files uh, knowing that it's possible that they could be discovered. And so we're going to go look at these graphics files that have been deleted. And of course, you can just right click on them and you can export them or you can add them to a custom content image and then you can explore that image. These are all DLL files, but you know I would go through here and look for some deleted graphics files. They have an X on them. That's the deleted file, so a bunch of folders down here. There's other ways below to do some custom searching, of course, some more granular searching, but that's for another micro nugget. I'm Michael James Shannon, CBT Nuggets instructor. I hope this micro nugget was informative for you. I want to thank you for viewing.